What is up, guys? What is up, guys? What is up, guys? It's the Sound Alchemist. <laughs> and I'm here with <laughs> Gersh One. And we're back to answer your questions in another episode of For the Greater. Yeah. Uh, this is a video series where we answer the questions left by you, the viewer. If you have a question for us, simply comment down below. Put a question in front of your question because we get to those questions first. first. That is what Zachary Hops did. Nope, sorry. That is what Seneca Nero did. And he asks, were the humans an old one creation? And if yes, for what purpose? To eradicate all life in the galaxy. Um, well, no. I think it leans more towards no, um, or at least not intentional. The only evidence that the Old Ones interacted with humans is the fact that the Golden Throne is Old One technology. Now, with that said, um, the Old Ones were known for you know creating the Orcs, the Eldar, and a bunch of other psychic beings. If the Old Ones wanted to create another psychic race to fight the war in heaven, they would have had all humans have psychic powers, which they don't. Right, and also humanity came way later after the old ones had already dipped. Um, right? Right. Because right. when I dip, you dip, we dip. That's right. <laughs> so I hope that answers that question. Uh, speculate down in the comment section below. Next one. Gad Yarviv. If a crew ate nothing but bacon, would it become a pig? Uh, nah. Nah. I mean, so here's the thing. When croup decide to eat something, it's dictated by their shaper. Their shaper's like, if we eat the meat from this animal, uh, they've got tough hide, so we, it'll be easier for us to, you know, take incoming fire or whatever. So he's like, eat that animal. Eating a pig probably won't benefit fet them much. I mean, they might get cute little curly tails, but that's pretty much it. They might have like um, stomachs that will dissolve pretty much anything, because that's what pigs have, right? That's why pigs eat their own. They, they like eat filth, right? <laughs> their own what? Gosh. Feces. They, uh, they don't. They, they don't eat their own poop. Yeah, they would. Nah. Pigs will eat their own poop. Pigs are pretty smart, believe it or not. Mm. Like if you keep a pig as a pet, it's pretty. It's. I, I think they said it's smarter than a dog. Even. I know a dog that eats poop. <laughs> um, if you're a farmer. Please, you know, comment down below. Let us know. Is a pig smart? That's what we were asking, right? Right. But no, I won't become a pig to answer your cruel question. Uh, next question comes from... Um, the Chill Troll. Hmm. What are those cylinders on the back of Space Marines? Like the backpack? They're backpacks. Right. Or what, what cylinders? On the back of a Space Marine. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. I mean, if you're talking about, like, cylinder-like things in the back of a Space Marine's head, those are the butcher's nails that the World Eaters use, and it makes them angrier and, like, basically blood-frenzied. I don't think that's the right word. Right, yeah. Yeah, other than that, that's, that's all I can think of. Because all, all, all that's in the back is just the backpack. I mean, the jetpack. Shoot them in the back. Shoot them in the jetpack. Yeah. Next question. Uh, this one is by Wap Marco. Has it ever been explained exactly how a perpetual works? Like, does a perpetual come back in his original body? Or does he just pop right back into existence somewhere else? Is there a period between when someone dies and comes back? Um, how does this work, basically? They don't really go into detail. Um, I feel like perpetualness has kind of gotten to like the dark corner of like GW. Because in recent times, I can't think of anything being at least hinted or even speculated about for perpetuals. Right, yeah. Um, and I don't even know if, like, the older stuff, if that gets, like, retconned or rewritten to something else. So I think Vulcan is still a perpetual, though. Right. Obviously, Vulcan would probably still be, and uh, the Emperor. Um, but, like, you got John Grammaticus, uh, who was in the Cabal. And all that stuff was... Yeah done away with i think right so it's it's, it's a little wishy-washy right now wishy-washy but i mean if you're if you're basing it on what would happen what was happening to vulcan during the horus heresy when he was basically getting tortured by uh conrad kurz he would regenerate himself so it's like he'd have his head chopped off he'd and, and grow back 
he'd be thrown into space, he'd die, and then once he like got reintroduced to like oxygen and stuff like that, he'd come back. Like Wolverine. Basically, yeah. I think that'd be the best way of explaining it. So next question comes from Marcel Goussard. I want to get into the tabletop. How do I convince my friends to buy starter sets? Hmm. Well, you don't want to scare them away by bombarding them with rules and how much things cost. I'd say, like, show them pictures of, like, oh, look at this awesome space marine. Oh, look at this, you know, hulking tyranid beast. Wouldn't it be cool if they fought? Hey, there's a game that makes you do that. And yeah. Then, like, read them, like, a few snippets of lore. The best way to do it is, like, because we did it out of, like, we didn't have anything to do in the winter. Like, we couldn't really play basketball, so we just kept going back to 40k, right? Basically, yeah. Um, we bought our, we, we each bought one starter box and split the models. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But, and then every time we come back to Warhammer 40k, it's always because of the lore. Mm -hmm. So show them our videos. Because, <laughs> like, that's, that's really interesting. If, if you like the army you're playing, you're going to enjoy the game much more. Yeah. And then it all depends on your age, too. Yeah, yeah. Next question comes from Fogwalker. Hmm. What would happen to the Imperium if the Imperial Guard were all to be turned to chaos simultaneously with no trace? I mean, it, I think it would devastate um, humanity. Like, yeah, Space Marines are strong enough to, to like, push back on on an army but the imperial navy is well you did say imperial guard so i'm guessing you also wanted to include the imperial navy because you didn't know it was attached to it if you did kudos um but if you did then the imperial navy would just like bombard planets after planet after planet uh the imperial army is nothing without the imperial navy <laughs> yeah that's true um but yeah if the imperial navy turned over i think like the space marines wouldn't be able to put up a fight with everything because yeah. an entire planetary sector is would just be dedicated to creating more Imperial Guardsmen. Like the Death Corps of Krieg would be all chaos. And that's just like a, a soldier factory machine. Yeah. Yeah. Soldier making factory machine. <laughs> soldier making machine. That's what I wanted to say. <laughs> factory machine. Yeah. <laughs> Next one. Oh, uh, this one's by Timothy Armstrong. He had another wholesome name. This is the third time asking, are there any worlds that make their criminals fight in gladiatorial combat for their freedom instead of sending them to the prison legions? Yes. Now, there's actually quite a few of them. Um, you don't really hear too much about it because like, that's not the focus of it. Um, but like, uh, what was the planet that Angron was in? I forget. Well, Angron's home planet. They used to do gladiatorial fights. Um, yeah. Uh, there's like a couple places in the um, Calixis sector. If you play Dark Heresy or just pick up some books from the Dark Heresy uh, game and they have so much good lore. Next question comes from Max Frankovich. Hello person of the, M of the syndicate. I have two questions. What is the current lore on Necron Lords alerting their, f alerting their forms to become more powerful? Adding canoptic shit to their bodies, etc. <laughs> do you know? Um, no, I do have the Necron uh, Codex, the newest edition. So I, I'm still trying to read through that, but I'm still going back and forth between the Tau and the Space Marine one. So yeah, I'll, I'll see if I could look into that and see what I can find. And then your second question is, do you glorious M. Furs hmm. make music? Where do I find it? The Sound Alchemist makes music. I w I w that's a little sample. And where do you find it? Look inside your heart. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> Next question. Um, <clears throat> this is by Cold Flame. Do you think the Emperor is indirectly creating a chaos god of unbelief? Maybe. Or even indirectly creating a chaos god. Of unbelief? Well, I I'm just saying in general. But he's saying one of unbelief. Unbelief, no. One in general, yes. Which is? The god of light. The god of the light. I think that's what it was. Okay. I'm not questioning you. I'm just... Oh, you just want me to elaborate? Yeah. Check out our 40 facts on <laughs> Is the Emperor a God? 
basically he's doing it not intentionally though like people are praying and believing that there is um you know happiness and joy joy next question jamie alberti do you guys think that chaos could prevent itself from completely destroying humanity if given the chance or would it not be able to control its urges of excess and extinguish its greatest source of nutrients? Um, so basically, it's just saying that, um, yeah, chaos is all about, you know, killing, gaining, you know, more followers and whatnot. But in doing so, they're actually weakening themselves because, like, they gain power from emotion and humans are all about emotion. So it's like... There's a balance there, but chaos always tips, you know, the scales. Yeah. So you think they can't control it, or they will be able to? Well, no, I think they br they continue to live because because of the chaos that they bring about. The, f the fact that they kill people, new people are born every day, um, people get diseases, some die, some don't, plagues, all that kind of stuff. That just brings chaos to the universe and they thrive off of that um there will never be a situation where the chaos gods um completely go away unless humanity destroys itself i don't think the i don't think chaos chaos is smart enough not to kill humans does that make sense yeah yeah completely anyways interesting take last yeah, last question comes from Alu Alucard Tepes. Not a wholesome name. <laughs> um, who is the biggest bully in 40k universe? I feel like Abaddon kind of fits that. He's not a bully. He's just trying to, you know, fit in. And everybody's like, no, you're a traitor. Go away. And he's like, come on. I'm just trying to park my car. <laughs> and then and then he's like, no, we don't want you to park here. And they're like, come on. And then Katie is like, Nah, go away. And then he gets mad and he crashes into Kadia. Kadia explodes. But whose fault was it? Kadia for not letting him park. I mean, that, that's a bully right there. You know On Kadia's part. You know who I think is a, a, a bully? Draco. He carved his name into like someone's Mort heart. Mort Mortarian's chest. Like that's like the quintessential bully. Like in a 90s flick. The bully who like pushes the kid in the sandbox and takes out a permanent marker and writes his name on his forehead. Or oh, something. that happened in it. Did it really? Yeah. I never uh, seen the, the chubby kid got like. Well, the dude was trying to like write his initials on the chubby kid, but I guess he like. I don't know. I think somebody threw a rock at him or something. I don't know. It's been a while. But Drago is a bully. Yeah. A cool OP bully, but yeah. Um, and that's all we got. Thank you for sending those questions our way. If you guys have more, comment down below. As always, put question before your question because we get those questions first. I uh, just want to reiterate that because there's a few on here that didn't have question there. But um, as always, next time, guys. Uh, yeah, that's all we got. This is the Sound Alchemist. Gershwan. We're out of here.